through the shades of entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I welcome the man whose passion for blades has not only shaped a thriving business, but has also carved a unique path in the realm of culinary excellence. Please welcome Rick Medeiros. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, again, we are doing this special of the Where Are They Now series. And so this series, again, we're welcoming entrepreneurs from uh, former guests of the show to really see what the heck have they been up to. And today we are bringing one of my good friends, Rick, the owner of Burnside Knives, amongst other things. Rick, how the heck are we doing today, my friend? Hey, what's up, buddy? How are you? I'm doing good. How's uh, Happy Thursday, Planet Earth? Oh, Happy Thursday, Planet Earth. Drinking some water, enjoying the sun. Can't complain. So, Rick, yeah, you, you, we've, you know, last time we chatted, uh, you were just kind of starting out Burnside Knives. Uh, it was a new kind of concept. You're, you're kind of coming out with, the, I think you had just came out with the Carmen, your, your, uh, the knife that you um, named after your child. And and you're slowly starting to build this brand. What's happened since yes. then? I I got thrown off a little bit. Actually, there was a small hiatus, and when we met, it was the revamping of Burnside. That Knives. is true. This is this is this is true. We we caught you on the the rebound. Yeah, it was uh, a moment of life and work. Um, pre-pandemic, pandemic, all of that stuff, kind of life coming at you uh, fast. And I took a small hiatus to focus on my footwear career. I was working at Nike and Brand Jordan at the time. And pandemic came around, did a Kickstarter, just as some fun to keep busy, and lost my job at Nike. I was doing the freelance gig for a minute while doing knives because the knife thing was growing, but it was not a full-time gig, but passion project, you treat like a full-time gig, like all good passion projects. And so I was able to go from freelancing during a pandemic, hunting for a new job, landing a new job uh, for one of the coolest athletes in the world, working at Under Armour on the Curry brand and working on Stefan's shoes and also creating more products. I think since we spoke last, um, we've come out with, and thanks to your help in the Shades of Entrepreneurship and our friendship, we were able to link up with Steelhead and Alex and create a collaboration between Burnside Knives and Steelhead as well as um, what else did we come up with? Uh, there was like a, a multi-tool for eating. I'm working on a new idea of a spork. And um, I know that you run the shapes of entrepreneurship, but our friendship bleeds over into this. And we've strategized and started talking about the idea of building a vertical knife brand rather than I can make a golf tool, I can make a spork. Why don't we make a couple of really good things and offered in multiple colors. So to answer your question, long story short, we've been cooking, doing <laughs> rad stuff, landed the largest partner as far as retail to date. And currently proud to say, I think there's like five to 6% of inventory left, zero debt, still own the LLC, want to grow it, make it a big thing. Um, knowing that tools and knives in this business, the longer you're around, the longer people have instilled trust in your products and building knives both in the US and overseas had very few returns, great customer receptivity, 
building the brand organically, just got out of Instagram social media jail and boosted a post. So it's been kind of fun. But uh, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, we're both dads. We're, we're both employees. We're both passionate, creative people that don't turn off. Um, same stuff, different day, more products and bigger smiles, I guess. I love I it. Know. I love it. <laughs> you know, one of the things you mentioned is, is, is there certainly that, that moment, um, um, with Nike, right. Where, where, where you lost your, your, your role. Yeah. How do you, how do you come back from that? How does, how do you continue to move forward and, and pass that failure part? I think everybody has different ways of going about it. I think there are healthy and destructive ways to go about any kind of big changes and losing a job or separating from your spouse or divorcing your spouse, having a child, having a job, having pet. It, all, uh, everybody has their own thing. I took to water, exercise, sleep, clean foods that, you know, I, it sounds, it sounds dumb and boring, but it was the healthiest, safest way for me to bounce out of a world of sport to a world of kind of being, I am every sport now on my own. Um, I took to working out and drinking water a lot, replacing, you know, soda for carbonated bubble water, if you will. But underneath all of that, I got pissed off. I got mad about the fact that like I was putting in hours and I didn't feel seen in a world where other people deserve to be more seen than me. I mean, look at the color of my skin in my eyes, right? I'm not a dummy, but I am an artist. And as an artist and a passionate creative with an unrelentless hunger and pursuit to build dope stuff, yeah. I kind of had to sit back a little bit and like, hey, I found a gig. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to try this. I'm going to put it out there. But underneath it all, I got really pissed off and I was like, I'll show you. And that's kind of been my whole life, though. You know, I mean, I think I grew up in a household and a community and a town of people that wanted a chance. So I think that's just part of me. Yeah, I got pissed and, and I was like, we're going to do this. And that's the, I think that's the beauty of of entrepreneurship is is. I can remember the moments when people um, have doubted me and I've used those doubtful moments as an opportunity to propel myself forward because man, please tell me I can't do something because I'm going to prove to you. In fact, it's kind of funny. I know this is uh, completely off topic, but last, last year I went on a golf trip with a bunch of boys and I played like crap, absolute dog crap. And so, you know what, this year I've been practicing my ass off because I was like, no way in hell am I going to show up again that shitty at playing something because I'm just again there's just that that fire of like I'm not going to do it now one of the things you also mentioned was this this vertical integration starting to change we'll talk about yeah. that a little bit talk about Burnside Knives vertical integration where are you going I have no problem telling people where I want to take the brand because as we both know we're people who say something and do it I started looking at my product line and what people liked, what was selling, what people talked about but didn't sell, all of the matrices, all the SWAT stuff that we've talked about. And what I realized is that if I have a couple of flagship models, and I, it's like I do this for other people, but doing it for yourself is very hard. It's like if I have a couple of flagship models, I can offer more finishes, more colors, more options within a confined space to really cater to that person that wants that exact thing. They want my cheeseburger or my piece of pizza, if you will. They want this pocket knife. I want them to come there because I can't serve everybody. Uh, I would love to be Santa Claus. I would love to be able to make anything and everything to everybody. But it's hard when it's a cutlery, flatware, outdoor inspired thing that's inspired by surf, skate, and music. but um, I really have to pare it down that it's like, hey, at the end of the day, if I can't put it into a backpack and sell it to somebody, if it's too much, then it's probably a different brand. And I think for where I want to take this and think about it vertically, uh, I'm going to focus on one of my models specifically. It'll keep the name but change the design. 
because the design will be able to be used in a vertical manner for materials and finishes and things that I think that I think I found the right spot for a product that has transcended gender, race, as well as geography. I think I found what I believe to be the perfect little knife for people. And I want to design and, and really, you know, flood the world with that cool pocket knife. Um, and so I think by doing that and offering it in some different colors and almost simplifying things that I don't need to have, like, I want a chainsaw, I want a cleaver, I want chopsticks, but I think I need to focus on one thing first and then those others will follow. And if they don't, at least I won't be um, risking building one product for a hypothetical. So this is the part in the business and the creative part where it's not exactly the most fun and creative, but it just challenges you to think about things differently. And in a way that becomes an art in itself. You know, but I'm also winging it too. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's kind of funny. You, you mentioned you know you're 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 learning it. You're winging it. What what is what is that? What are some of those things that you've learned as you're scaling Burnside Knives that you're like, man, I wish I'd have knew, known this earlier. The vulnerability and being confident to share your work. I feel so dumb for withholding so many ideas for years. Um, I had just finished working on some footwear product at work and had a nice like handoff. And I had a moment where I had no responsibilities for like 72 hours. And I said to myself, there's a knife show in Utah, get on the airplane, go talk to the vendors, go talk to the other makers, go see if there's a retailer. And I I worked till 2.30 in the morning. I got on a 5 a.m. flight, slept from Portland to Utah, met with all of the buyers that I've talked to for years that I've never shaken their hand and just said, hey, do you know who so-and-so is? And I said, hey, guys, they're like, where did you go? It's like, I do this part-time. This is a one-man show with a bunch of friends building it up. And they're like, what? And they're like, I knew that you did it, but one? It's like, yeah, I have a day job and I love footwear. I love sneakers and knives. So what I did was I utilized the time that I had just kind of betting on myself, paying for an expensive flight, going down, not taking a pocket knife with me, no checking bags, and was back on the plane that night because I needed to take my kiddo to something. So it was the idea that utilizing the time that I had, taking the finances that I had and, and like not buying myself fancy things. I'm like, I'm going to put some of these sales back into this or that money can buy me a plane ticket to go and talk to somebody because it's more important to talk to them in person than it is through an email or a phone call. And that's an expensive, hi, what's up? But sometimes you have to do that. And that's been kind of one of the things about being vulnerable, saying, hey, where should I go to get this made? I want to do this. I don't know how to do that. And just being transparent with people, like, I want to do this. I'm going to do this one way or another, but I can do this a smart way and we can partner, or I can do this the wrong way and I'll keep stumbling over myself and getting in the way. So either we help make this thing beautiful or we just keep watching me fumble. <laughs> and so people were really encouraging. They're like, I would love to. You need to talk to this person. This person has that person, this person. And then it just becomes a thing. And it's like, cool. I think I might have just found like 12 people that I want to steal from all of the companies that they've worked for and do this together. And it's like, well, that's far fetched, but all these people really want to help if you just ask. And I feel like an idiot for not being vulnerable sooner and asking people for help. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. You know, and I think I, I cannot encourage people enough uh, to get out and network and meet with people face to face because it really truly builds that in person personalized relationship. Now, one of the things you mentioned uh, also is, is you do have a day job. Sneakers and knives are your thing. You know, you you yeah. left Nike and then you started actually designing shoes for quite possibly one of the greatest shooters in NBA history, but arguably the greatest, Stephen the Curry. Greatest. So go ahead and yeah. give us give us give us a little insight into. What are you doing with with that kind of program? What are you building there? Because again, that is its own entrepreneurial journey. 
We are a very small footwear unit. I am just <laughs> one person on the team. Uh, my job title is a senior designer for footwear color. So if you see Stefan wear anything out on court right now <laughs> or in the foreseeable future, it'll be something that the team that I'm on created. So the team of what? I kind of <laughs> the team of what? I do have a fantastic footwear designer and footwear design team uh, that create the actual shoe. And then I get to come in and uh, help with the color and the storytelling. There's a, a material designer. There is a footwear designer. There is a director or a VP. All of the people that you would need to help create product. Um, I do have the one cool job. I think I've earned it is being able to do a bridge between graphics color, storytelling, packaging, all of that stuff. And and strangely enough, after just a little over two years, I actually got to sit down and have dinner with Stefan last night and meet his crew. And it was really quite wonderful. It's something that I was looking forward to. I was giving the guys a hard time. I was like, I bet MJ the first year I was over there. Come on, guys. <laughs> um, just as giving them a hard time. But um, I'm very grateful for that opportunity because – I fell into sneakers by graphic design, doing t-shirts, hats, and accessories. And it's like, hey, we need some help. And it's like, oh man, I cannot believe somebody just turned me onto this because of all the components, all the like little tactile pieces and the build of all of that has just been, I geek out on all those like little components, you know, like I still remember how a new era hat is made with its 21 or 22 steps, depending on that stitch. And so there's just a part of me that that's like, that's my, I don't know what you call it, but that's the thing that turns me on is like the little building of things and building sneakers and telling stories. And eyes is just, it's hard work. I should have picked one or the other, but I'm trying my best. No, and I think you're doing a great job. You know, you, one thing you mentioned, uh, you know, either people can help you uh, and succeed or you'll do it by yourself and you'll flounder. And I got to tell you, my friend, you've been doing a lot of things by yourself because, you know, I've been, uh, you know, riding alongside you in some of these these processes, and you have not been fumbling at all. You have been just continuously riding this this galloping, I would say, in, into the future, and, and it's very inspiring. And, and I'm very excited of where you're going and where you continue to grow, because it truly is um, a humbling to watch uh, you be able to take criticism and, and really pivot and being able to like not say, okay, no, this guy's an asshole. He's He's telling me a bunch of crap and we've had some pretty frank conversations. I'm like, Hey, what are we doing? And then, and I, I got to tell you, um, you taking the advice and like continuing to move forward and then seeing it succeed has been, has been awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I could not have gotten here from without the help. I mean, going back to the very first recruiter, Cody, who gave me a chance that brought me back to the Northwest. Or sitting down at like White Owl for an after work kind of social and meeting Shanika. And 12 years later, she's calling me saying, you want to work for Stefan? There's just moments where it's like, I've had pressing hard moments. I mean, I've had more crap sandwiches than I've had fresh sandwiches. However, the part that I love that I don't think anybody can take away is I make my friends, my family and community proud. And... I don't think there's a single graphic designer or footwear person that can come close to the athletes while they played or the roster of being able to. Um, I That was my trophy hunting. You know, I collected baseball cards and basketball cards and football and all of those things. But to be able to, I mean, Andy Warhol outdid people in the art gallery for his prints, right? I wanted to be somewhat in that realm of like basketball shoes. You can't beat any of the designers. The designers are the pinnacle, but the storytellers that come in and finish them and all of that, I'm like, I'd like to go down as that for, for that someday. But it, carrying the weight of family, friends, and community, and it's like, hey, keep your nose clean, you know, like all of those pressures from mom, dad, and family, that stuff is, uh, that stuff, the stuff that is important to me and keeps me humble for sure. Because I know how many people would love to be in my position. And I also know how lucky and fortunate I am to have had as many crap sandwiches to get to where I'm at today. 
Yeah. Well said. Well said. You know, you gotta, you gotta yeah. sometimes have those crap sandwiches in order for you to get to that sub for sure. Now, what looking back, Makes you know, the, it's important. you know, looking back in the last few years, what would, what advice would you give a younger Rick? What's something you wish oh. you would have known? I mean, that vulnerability thing is probably a big one that, and, um, one of the things that I'm most proud of that I would look back and, and tell my younger self is probably the, uh, good for you for keeping people relationships and all that ahead of work, because I know what that's like to get inundated and get sucked into that. And I've seen that with that. So I would probably go back and congratulate my younger self on that. And then I would probably tell my younger self, be careful of the people that are the closest to you that you've trusted for the longest amount of time, because you'd be surprised how giving good and good natured somebody that you just met versus somebody you've known a long time. That's a, that's a deep one, but that would probably be like, don't be so trusting and trust a little bit more. Yeah. You know, that's no, weird. no, that's no weird. I, I agree. I think, uh, the person that probably uh, hates you the most, that actually despises you the most, is somebody you probably grew up with. And the people that probably want to see have you succeed the most are people that you've never met in your entire life. Uh, you know, when you kind of go back and think about Nipsey Hussle and how he passed away, he passed away, he got shot by somebody he knew from day one, and they just hated him just because he was successful. That was it, you know. And so I, I completely agree. Just be very mindful about those. Now, now Rick, again, sure. you – Again, I want to say congratulations because you just successfully closed another Kickstarter campaign. One, tell us yeah. a little bit about the Kickstarter campaign, and then tell Dude. us how folks can continue to support Burnside Knives. Yeah, so uh, I actually, one of the largest customers that Burnside has ever had privately became a buddy of mine because he bought so many products and he kept talking to me about this thing that I was doing and asking me questions that it wasn't just like a transactional interaction. And we started to create a dialogue and the guy knew somebody that I knew. And then that guy knew somebody that, and I was like, oh man, this is kind of like our thing where when we met, we knew like a handful of people. He reached out to me and said, I would love to do something with you someday. Dan Coronado is a fantastic talent that I don't, think gets enough due credit and when he reached out to me and I say that like he's already famous in my eyes right but when I saw his work in his portfolio and the guy's got a stack of work to keep him busy for the next three years however I I was sitting there and I was like you know what why not do that right now like let's do a project right now and so to be perfectly frank, straight up and honest with you, I, I offered him a percentage of the Kickstarter or a flat fee because he's a video guy who could do all the editing and I'm not very well versed at that. I had a good product. He thought that I should do it in a certain amount of colors. I made those colors and then we were kind of talking and collaborating and picking his brain. It's kind of like, oh, I have this really cool tool. He's talking to me and telling a story about what it means to him, what the brand means to him. And I just said, hey, your knife says just about as much, or it says as much about me as it does you. Your knife says a lot about you. Would you like to be the art director? And he made this beautiful film. We were talking about like little shortcuts and edits. And we were going to, and we are giving back now that it's a successful thing, uh, donate to the Veterans of Foreign Affairs or the Veterans Affairs um, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, one that Dan had picked out about um, a firefighter who adopted a, a little girl and he helps build homes and communities. And, and I thought that was a fantastic one. And then the other one is to the American Red Cross, which I thought is great in case of disaster relief or things of that nature. But the camp set knives was basically a, a paring knife and a mini bread knife, two pieces that I think parents can use with their kids. They are sharp, but you know, whether you're cutting a grilled cheese or just having like a good extra little paring knife, these were two of uh, the pieces that I wanted to start in the kitchen um, because I'd like to grow Burnside knives into a vertical brand, but I'd like to have a couple of kitchen items as well. And so we asked for 
$7,000 to help give us a head start on the production. We made 74, 7,300, something like that. So we made it in just a little bit extra. I have to make my donations this week and tell the Kickstarter people thank you and what have you. And then um, the best part was I believed in this thing and had just done some sales for Burnside Knives and had a little bit in the tank. And I started production the day that I launched the campaign and I paid for production. I believed in it. So by the time the campaign ended, I already had a 40 day head start. So I'm really excited about doing that and uh, have, I'm really looking forward to seeing those in the coffee shops and the sandwich shops that those are going to, because I think that'll be really fun and exciting. Um, and I just think it's a cool little tool. So very excited about that. And then if people are interested after August, after I'm done fulfilling all of the 61 orders, I'll put them up on the on the website for sale. But chances are I'm probably going to reach out to the retailer and see if they want to pick up the rest of them because they called me the day that the campaign launched and they said, hey, why don't you just share this with us? And it's like, what? They're like, we would have put in a you know couple thousand piece order. And I was like, oh. So it's kind of rethinking like, hey, I don't have to just like put it out there to the world and cross my fingers. Ask, asking people, sharing, building decks. Uh, Salihe Bembury's quote, decks lead to checks that he got from somewhere, wherever he got that from. It's true. I just don't ever apply it. <laughs> like don't ask for help. And so I had learned through the Kickstarter thing. Nobody wanted to work with us after we launched it. We should have given it to an ad agency before stuff like that. So it it was successful on its own with just a couple of guys like waving our banners and flags and hollering and thank you for your support and your community as well. Thank you to the Shades of Entrepreneurship community. And um, man, I, I just, I think it was just one of those things where we wanted to see something fresh and new. And I was like, oh, I have something that's kind of cool and actually useful. And and I'm not, it's not a hard sell. If you can't, if you can't use a new Perry knife or a little sandwich knife, then I don't know if I'm the right brand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I remember the conversations, you know, when you were showing me the golf pieces and you were kind of going, and I was like, let, you know, instead of going, uh, you know, wide and narrow, how about we go vertical and deep? And, and, you know, I'm really excited folks. Cause I did, I was literally talking to my wife about it. I'm like, Hey, by the way, I forgot to tell you, I got, we got some kitchen knives coming cause the kicks are closed and they're about to be shipped out at some point. I'm, I'm super stoked. Uh, I actually have several Burnside knives. I know a lot of my friends keep asking me to get them some as well. My neighbors uh, really love. So if you have not seen it yet, the Burnside knives and still head, uh, knife for that. That thing is the coolest thing, especially for those that are fishermen. Um, and it really is a, your knife says a lot about you and the, the true beauty behind that Rick too. Uh, and, and you're starting to see it. The, the story take hold is you're really creating stories, uh, a knife for everyone, right? Whether it be a I'm kitchen trying. knife, whether it be a utility knife, whether it be for fishing, whether it be just a pocket knife, uh, your knife truly says a lot about you and it depends on what knife you have. And so I'm, I'm really applaud everything you're doing and I'm really excited in how it continues to move forward. I'm, I'm personally excited to continue to call you one of my close friends and, and being able to you know, truly pick up the phone and then like, Hey, let's bounce some ideas. Let's have a white a whiteboard conversation. Um, and let's just really figure out what the hell we're doing. Because I, I think sometimes it's, it's really easy to feel like you're floundering by yourself. But when you, when you put together a group of individuals, um, that really want to help you succeed and want to see you succeed as well, it makes life so much easier. So appreciate you and all of everything you've done for me as well. Uh, I, I continue to be a hundred percent of one of your fans as well. And so, uh, for, but before we go, please tell the folks, how can they learn more about you? Uh, and where, where can they contact you? Where can they purchase some of these knives? Oh boy. Okay. So burnsideknives.com is currently going through what you would see its first major sellout. I'm excited about that, but it also is creating a little anxiety within me. <laughs> um, you can go to bespokepost.com. You can go to bladehq.com. Um, there's not a lot of stuff on eBay. Thank goodness about Burnside Knife. Some of those other brands got stuff on there. Um, yeah, 
other than that, probably like, you know, friend of a friend, word of mouth. It's still, I mean, like we've been doing this for almost a decade and I still love the idea that it still feels like a zine if it was a brand, you know, or it is a brand and it feels like a zine. I don't know. I mean, I think just the idea of like having something that you want to build towards the future that is a quality product and to the point that you mentioned, it is so hard to tell a story for everybody, but you have guys that are like, I want to be the hero or I want to be the villain or I want to make something that is different from the rest of the group. It's like, hey, I just want to make something cool. Y'all can sit with us, but the attitudes can't. You know what I mean? Yep. And so in that mannerism, it's kind of like it's taken a little bit longer to explain what your knife says a lot about you. It's not about being better than somebody else or being lesser than somebody else. It's like being you everybody takes yeah just be yourself and in a way it's like taking outdoors and basketball which are my two favorite things those cross from fashion music etc across the board to culinary i'm like if i can't reach people with basketball and outdoors or sneakers and knives or whatever it is that i embody because I do a lot of stuff for a lot of people and tell all of their stories. But then when it comes to this Burnside thing, it's like, no, we're going to start with roses. And I'll share this. I'm, I'll put this out there in the world. Moving forward, Burnside Knives is going to focus on the rose. And it sounds audacious. It's a little crazy. I don't know how long it'll take me, but there will be a dozen options because everybody loves a dozen roses. Everybody and loves it's just, a dozen roses. It's just simplifying stuff like that. And it's like, well, what kind of a rose is it? It's like no two roses are the same. So we're going to really like take all the things that we know how to do and how to turn them. Man, and now I'm envisioning like a fucking phenomenal display case where all the blades are open and each one of the blades has their own little filler because there's 12 spots and it makes like a beautiful bouquet of roses. But they're basically the end of their Burnside knife. Oh, man. See, Rick, we, we got to stop recording because people are going to be. <laughs> no, it's OK. I, I, I don't mind sharing this because if somebody beats me to the punch on it, so be it. We got it on film here. You know those like blind boxes when you get a toy yeah. and it's foil and you don't know what you get? You know what's beautiful about those is the little piece of paper that comes inside and you don't know what the mystery is, but you have that map. Which rose are you getting next? Even better, if the rose costs you X, but if you could buy the rose for 25% less on a blind, that might be good business. And you have the option to turn it back in. Great I want price. everybody to win. Yeah. Wow. Man. I love it. I love slowly building it up. Rick, man, I'm, I'm again, very excited. And folks, again, if you forget uh, what happened where Rick mentioned to actually purchase business knives, I will have this information on the Shades of Entrepreneurship newsletter where you can find us at the shades of e.com. If you also want to do me a favor, if you're visiting the shades of e.com, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the Patreon section for a little, it's $5 a month. You become one of this Shades of Entrepreneurship's Patreon, which will help support the show. Uh, Rick, thank you again so much. Is there any last words you would like to say for the listeners? Somebody reach out beyond all of this and, and, and make a friend with Gabriel Flores. You'll uh, thank yourself. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. You're Rick. a good one. I appreciate you, bro. Oh man, we're, we're, we're it's it's a bro fest over here, man. It's been a phenomenal bro time, and, and we're just continuing to grow. And I again, I cannot wait to see the next iterations of Burnside Knives because it just Heck continues yeah. to be a phenomenal, phenomenal thing. So, folks at home, please visit me at theshadesofe.com. You can also follow at the Shades of E on the social sites. Thank you, and have a great. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.